is recorded. So this is how I grab my stuff and put it in YouTube channel. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so really cool. Everything they see right now will be recorded on the screen as, as well as my voice or any of your voices. The most important thing is about this uh, software is give you not just the average. You probably are here about the average. It gives you the average. It gives you the maximum. Look at the average first. Max, minimum, max to minimum. And the spec requirement. The spec is 20 foot candles. So for example, in one 100 vestibule, the first area, the spec says for 20 foot candle, my average is 20.7. Am I close to my average? That's not bad, right? 20, I'm asking for 20, I got 20.7. Maximum is 24, minimum 17.4. Maximum to minimum is 1.421. Maximum to minimum, guys, is the difference between the darkest spot in your room and the brightest spot in your room. You want the difference to be as close to one to one, meaning the light distribution in the room is so even. So your eyes is not going to be stressed when it looks at something too dark, and then and uh, I mean dark or 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 what stress your eye. So the idea is to have minimum, maximum, minimum, as close to one to one as practical. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get one to one um, all the time. So this is what this uh, what this uh, software can get you: detailed calculation for every single area, every single area in your in your office building. Any question about this? So. So that's kind of the calculation that you're going to get. Then when you run the system, this is how it looks like. It takes area per area, give you the average way at the top and the right-hand side. The average, the maximum, the minimum, again, maximum, minimum for every single area. But what you're looking at here is what we call an open office. And these uh, rows of lights or columns of lights, the blue ones are the line of fixture. These, guys, these are what we call a direct and direct light, the one you hand to keep, you could have seen it, the architecture of them. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I can tell you, most of our engineer, most of the projects that I work on, the lights are specified by the architects. Because anybody knows light, we are smart in analyzing things, but we don't see the beauty as engineers as much as you guys do. So the, um, the lighting fixture can make the building look ugly or look beautiful. And that's your job as an architect to fit the fixture into your design, into your design of the building. We can help you by showing you samples, of course we're experts in the lighting business, so we can show you the samples, and you have to pick the right color that fits your building, and the right design, and so forth. What we have here is what we call a direct indirect light, where you suspend the fixture down two feet, and it shoots light up and down. The smart of the decided that if you do it this way, it makes the people feel welcome. If you look right now, these are called the two by four choppers. They shoot the light down, so if you look at the ceiling, it's dark, almost. That, that makes people uncomfortable from statistical analysis that they did in people behavior and so forth. So they came up with this direct and direct light where it shoots up, let the ceiling, shoot down, let the floor, and the whole building is completely lit. With the whole room will be lit. So that's kind of the buzz right now. A lot of architects love it. At least when I was doing a design, and uh, right now we deal with engineering firms, they specify this type of fixtures all the time. Instead of the alternative, is that one above your head. Okay, so that's basically, here's a couple of analysis of that one. I'm not going to bore you guys, just show you a couple of things that you can get out of this building. You can have 3D. We do all the calculation. I don't know if you guys can see. All my calculation is done right in here. So if you, um, if you grab, uh, you can see where the fixtures are located right in here. And the calculation is right at this level. We do the calculation at the floor level, at two and a half feet, which is what? The disk level. So that most of the applications will be done at this uh, this level. Okay, and this is just talks about calculation, two and a half, and a couple of uh, uh, luminaire mounting fixtures and so forth. And floor cavity, you guys, I don't know, how, there's something called floor cavity, ceiling cavity, and uh, room cavity. Room cavity is a big deal in terms of the design. So I'm not going to bore you other than the most important cavity that you're going to see is something called room cavity. It takes into consideration the calculation is going to be at two and a half, and the ceiling is say ten foot ceiling. So the distance between two and a half and ten foot ceiling is what is it? Uh, seven and a half. Seven and a half. That has some calculation. That area, that the area that needs to be lit really perfectly. I don't care too much about the floor in an office area because nobody lay down on the the tables and do their work on the floor. So that area is called the room cavity area. It's a big big deal in terms of um, of when we do the calculation. And I'm not going to bore you with, uh, it's right here. I don't know if you guys can see the distance here. OK, so that's my room cavity ratio. And then here's how you calculate your room cavity ratio. 
um, you take five multiply it by the height of the cavity, which is right in here, and then you multiply it by length and width. You add the length to the width and you divide it by the area. This is a you know so you take the height of the cavity, which is seven and a half, multiply it by five, then divide it, um, multiply it by five, then multiply it by the dimension of the width length of the room and divide everything by the area. Who cares? Did the John tell you guys about the coefficient of utilization. This is very crucial because it gets you a number that's called coefficient of utilization number. Coefficient of utilization. That's the most important number for any picture. For you guys to save you the time of looking and calculating the coefficient of utilization, uh, I think John gave you it as 0.8, if I remember right. It's 0.8, coefficient of utilization. But that's a big deal. And I'm moving, and then, uh, here's the one I'm going to do in a second, guys. Um, the number of fixtures, the quantity of fixture, this formula, equal the foot candle multiplied by the square foot divided by the lumens, pure lamps, blah, blah, blah. That's how you can decide how many fixtures you need in your room. We're going to be using this formula to find the quantity of fixture you use in the room by hand. So if you get the number of your fixtures equal the foot candle required, say 60 foot candle, multiplied by the square foot of the, the area, divided by the lumens, the lamp, and the coefficient of utilization, and light loss factor, so-called light loss factor. Um, so if you guys can, uh, can get that one, because that's the formula that we're going to be using to calculate it by hand. So if you look at, um, if you take a room like this one, for example, say it's uh, 30 by 30, if you take a foot candle, I'm going to maintain a 70 foot candle here, Multiply by the square feet of the area. What's the area? 30 by 30. 30 times 30. Divided by how many lumens each lamp is going to have. How many lumens are these? Uh, how many lumens? Say, let's say 3,000 lumens in this one. Um, and then divided per lamp. Divided how many lamps um, you have. How many lamps per picture. We're going to use the two lampers. Right one above your head. By the coefficient of utilization, you would say about 28. And light loss factor, how often you, you clean these fixtures. How often you change the lamp. How often you, um, these are called light loss factor because the lamp is going to lose. You're going to lose some of these um, because of uh, cleaning, because of changing the ballast, changing the lamp, lamps, and so forth. So keep in mind, this is the formula we use in a short, shortly here. Uh, and I want you guys to, to remind me of it. So, okay, so that's basically what we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's go move directly into. A couple of fixtures, guys. Oh, everything is based on what we call the IES, International Illumination Society of North America. They have all the standards that you that you imagine for this. When we, for us engineers, guys, what lighting does to us, it allows us to have the layout of the fixtures and the schedule catalog number of all the fixtures in the building. Then we grab them into, we used to do them in CAD, and then we circuit them. And you guys are familiar with the circuit. You have to grab a circuit here, Connect uh, 17 fixtures of this type with one circuit, one switch if you want to, take them to the panel home run. That's exactly what we do and why we use this software, to allow us to circuit and control the system. Control of these lights can be as, as simple as snap switch right on the door, or it could be an occupancy sensor, timer, a motion detector, anything you want it to be. So that's why we use this software, because our outcome is we have these fixtures laid out give us the act, the real foot candle for the, in the room, and we circuit them because we're electrical engineers. What do we do? We circuit things, make it work. You guys make it look nicer. Um, okay, a couple of things about lighting control panels. You cannot meet the energy code right now, guys, unless you have a lighting control panel. You are green, everybody's green, becoming green. In order to meet the energy code right now, you almost have, almost always have to have some type of uh, auto control on in your lighting system. So remember, a, a snap switch on the wall is not going to cut it anymore. So you have to have an occupancy sensor where it can sense when you move in, allow you 15 minutes. If nobody moves in the room, it turns the light off. The whole idea is what? Save energy. So to meet the energy code, you almost always have to have some type of a control panel. Here's a control. A control panel guys, is, a, is a panel full of relays. I don't know if you know what a relay is. They have a, I don't know how much you guys learn about electrical, but a relay, you have a little coil here. When you energize the coil, physically, mechanically drives two contacts to shut. So I can energize the coil from push liner by laptop or from an occupancy sensor. So that's 
what you're looking at, all these relays, A, B, C, D, all the way. They are controlling lights in different rooms, and they're fit from different circuits. This is what we call the relay panel. Um, and all this is to meet the energy code. Otherwise, you're going to be able to meet it. The last thing is the lighting schedule. When we're done as an engineer, we're supposed to come up with lighting schedule. So if we're going to maintain the system, troubleshoot it, we will make it clear for the electrician which one of these circuit breakers is going to be feed this area. Wouldn't you think it's a smart idea to, to identify all these circuit breakers? So that's what we call it, lighting schedule. Um, I mean, um, yeah, lighting schedule. So if you look at this base here, 120 lease base, I have a 20 amp circuit breaker. The load on it is uh, 1277. It's in phase A. Um, circuit one. So when I go right there, it's a circuit one that's going to be controlling this area. Does that make sense? Yes, no? And I'm flying a little bit here, guys, because of, uh, um, you know, the timing. This is one of the most important things that you guys and us are going to be working on. It's called limiting schedule. You guys are good, the good architects, understand the lights really good because light can make the room look ugly or look beautiful. And who's responsible for making the room look appealing to the owners? You, not me. I'm, I'm a system guy. I make the system work. So that's why this luminary schedule is, I think it's the most crucial link between us as electrical engineers and you as, as architects. Um, if you look at this one, the most important thing you're going to get about this one is um, take this. This is how the fixture is going to look like. I label it by E. This is just for us. I have the quantities. I can't remember if it's two or something here. I can't read it. Then the most important thing is the catalog number. This is what the electrical contractor is going to go to buy this fixture. Then we can't blame each other then because I'm telling him to give him a catalog number to buy the exact fixture that I want him to do. Um, then some description about the fixture, how many lamps in the fixture, the file, the IES file that he did the calculation on. Every calculation that he did was come up with a file called the IES file. These are all the manufacturer fixtures have to adhere to this, um, like DWG, DWG file. Every drafting software have to adhere to some format of DWG. IES file, every manufacturer of any fixture have to create a file for every fixture that sh so show the, the, the distribution of lumens over a certain area. They call it IES file. Um, and of course, it gives you how many lumens each fixture, how many lumens each lamp is going to get, and the light plus factor. 0.7 and the watts for the fixtures and it goes all the way through as I said this is one of the most important link between us electrical engineers and new architects there's a fixture direct and direct light guys pure light if you go online and show your website you can find a lot of these uh, fancy fixtures a lot of architects like them because they make the room look good and what's the alternative the cheap the most economical fixture is right above your head here two by four with a couple of uh, lamps in it Cut sheets, and that's the presentation in this uh, this part of the presentation. Any question, guys? Made it very quick, very fast. Just give you an idea of what we do with that software. Without the software, we will be lost. <laughs> cool. Any question? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I used to, but this time it came everything. Yes, I'll. Uh, if you, if John, if you email me, I'll email to John and I'll send it to you. Or to them. Okay, and then you guys will get it. Okay, so this is my first part. If you guys don't have any um, stuff, the only the other thing I want to show you is um, um, okay. Let me see here. Let's go to um, I think one of them is open here. One of them should be open. Here's the software, professional software. I'm just going to show you guys. Um, we can use it also in the parking lot. Oops, this does not exist. Let's go directly, take a snapshot, get out of here. Okay. Take a few seconds for my system. So many things going on. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is just part of a building. I thought I walked the students through it, but our students will do all of that show you how the system works and then I'll um, on my YouTube channel guys I have hours of lecture how to use the software I mean when you're an architect if you if you're bored one night when you look at them I'll show you the link right now um, to help our students learn it, what we what I do right now is every all my lectures I go to my YouTube channel um, 
So I'll show you in a second here. But this software, there's at least five lectures on YouTube how to use the software step by step that you walk my students through it um, when it when it loads. Okay, come on, buddy. Still loading here. I'm just going to show you a snapshot of it, and then we'll go into the. Well, maybe we're, while we're waiting, I'll show you. Oops, here you go. We're in. Okay, so here's what the software is, guys. It gives you the room, and then you build this, the, um, the cubicles. So if you look over here, there is a room that, that we have two fixtures right in here and all the calculation in it. And if I have some calculation, calculation, uh, statistics, if I put my, um, where is my calculation zone, statistics. Um, okay, here you go, statistics. Well, with my statistics, it shows all the calculation on this side. They're grade because every time you change it, it grades the data. It means you have done some change, you have to do calculation. So this is just a really easy to use. You can get, you can look at 3Ds in any dimension of it um, to look how the buildings will look like. Um, you can render. We don't use it yet to render, but you can render if you want to from this software and so forth. Okay, so because of the lack of the time, guys, I'm gonna move on with this. I want to show you another thing very interesting before we do it, we do it by hand um, is where to find these fixtures. So if you go right here, um, I already fired a couple of things. Um, well, let's go to my YouTube channel. This is a, if you guys have a, not to brag or anything, but this is a, a YouTube channel that I started two years ago. And the, to date, there's 189 videos in it for a total of 250 hours. Don't expect you guys to sit and watch 250 hours. What you're looking at, the first one is lighting calculation done yesterday for my students by hand. Um, there's a lot of calculation there, a lot of electrical stuff. So if you go chat Kirby YouTube, you should be able to find it. What I want to tell you, the easiest way to find it, if you go to playlist, you guys are familiar with YouTube, right? You are the new generation here. If an old man like me can handle it, you can handle it. If you go to the playlist, you're going to find uh, there's funny stuff here, but you don't need to look at the funny stuff. Wiring, grounding, all the way. Um, um, there's one for you because we're talking about lighting. Here's lighting calculation. There is a, you know what playlist is? It's a group of videos really associated with one function. That's what playlist is. If you go to lighting calculation, <clears throat> it will tell you all the lighting calculation. Here's all the videos that I have about lighting. So you can get all of them in one. Here's the lighting calculation by visual, step by step how to use it. And oh, by the way, if you look at the, the time here, it's one hour, 38 minutes. So we're not, we're, if you're looking for five minutes, this is not your place. These are at least a lecture, at least half an hour, each one of these. Uh, but you can uh, speed through it, you know, 37 minutes. All these are, I mean, lectures, like you guys will lecture with your teachers. Okay, so I thought just to show you this one, a lot of resources. Since I'm going to be here, guys, to talk about power for you, I think next week or the week after, I can't remember. This is also a good source of power, um, electrical power and so forth. So, and I'm going to stop right here. Um, and I'm going to show you, the next thing I'm going to show you is Lithonia. Lithonia, if you go Lithonia Lighting, Lithonia is the guys um, who sponsor visual software, the software that you're talking about visual software. So if you go there, guys, it's um, lithonia.com, and you can see the spelling right there. You're going to find every single picture that God created. So if you are a green guy or gal, here's your LED fixtures, the most up-to-date LED fixtures here, direct and direct light. Remember the ones that I was telling you, we, we can suspend them, direct and direct lights, and all this good stuff. There is um, So there's a lot of lights. This is the the common one, the one that you guys are using here, we don't have louvers, uh, two by fours. If you want T8 louvers, two by fours, these are coming in the commercial building. So there's a lot of fixtures that you can pick from. So what I did, um, for those of you who are green, I, I like to show the LEDs at the beginning here. You see them LED fixtures. So it's great, great to pick any one of them. But I picked one for you guys just because of the time. Um, um, okay, here we go. I picked one PDF file should be here. Okay, where did I where did we go? Thought I picked one. So many softwares. 
Well, we can pick it again. Okay, let's just uh, let's just go to LED since you guys are LEDs. Click on LED. You can go to a fixture like an LED fixture. All the information about the LED fixture that you can use. Now you guys are green people, but I'm going to take you to something very important. Always, as engineers and architects, go go to the sheet specification sheet. I need a two by four because we're very familiar with two by four. For a for a uh, volumetric recessed luminal fixture, exactly like the one above your head, except LEDs. Um, so if you click on that one, <clears throat> and hopefully it will load the, the PDF file description of that fixture. And um, okay, this is one of the most important thing for us because when we put the catalog number right here, guys, we type it. And we send that to the electricians. They're going to buy exactly that particular fixture. So if you look at this fixture, oops, come on, bud. Can't not save. I don't want to save it. Just move. There you go. Okay, here's the fixture. How it looks like. You have some information about um, intended use, combined with LEDs, lighting control, blah blah, performance design. So text. Where do you need you'd use it? But I want to go because of the lack of time. Um, to give you guys the very important things about the catalog number that you can order right in here. Here's, if you don't know which fixture, always we go by the sample. Can you guys see that sample here? That's the most common fixture that they use. If you don't know which one to pick and you want to be as close to the truth as possible, grab that one and then modify it as you go through. That's what I would do. Voltages, that's up to us to decide what the voltage. But uh, my friend, um, John was telling you guys about the coefficient of utilization. Every fixture comes with something called co coefficient of utilization. I don't know if I'm going to be able to highlight it. Um, okay, why can't I highlight this one? Okay, so I don't know if you can see. Here's my coefficient of utilization here, right? If you look at the room cavity ratio. So anyway, so these are the numbers based on floor reflection 20, based on ceiling reflection of 70, 80, or 50 and based on um, wall reflection of uh, 70, 50, or 30. If wall reflection, the darker the wall, the less they're going to reflect light. So based on all the reflection of wall, ceiling, floor, um, and the room cavity ratio, they assign every fixture a utilization factor. That's how efficient this fixture under these circumstances they're going to put these fixture in without boring you with, with some of this stuff. Okay. And every fixture come with IES file, guys. That's that one here. Um, and it gives you the saving energy and a couple of other things. Okay, so I'm going to leave because of uh, the timing. Any question about this? Any questions? You can go there. What we do as an engineer is we go type the catalog numbers um, that we want to type it, give it to the uh, electrician, the electrician will buy exactly. So and if they don't, and then we can make them reorder the exact fixtures. So that goes into a spec then. That right? goes into a spec. <coughs> this one here, the cut, we call them cut sheets, and the luminary schedule go hand in hand. So the luminary schedule have the exact kind of number that I give to the, art, to the architects as well as to the electrical contractors. And also this to supplement it, we also supplement it with a cut sheet. So if somebody doesn't know what we're talking about, it's a two, the name of this one is 2RT LED. Every fixture has a name, believe it or not, and there's thousands and thousands of fixtures. We have students who graduate from Dunwoody guys specialize in lighting. I have two of them right now. All what they do day in, day out, they specialize in lighting and they work for lighting distributors. They do lighting calculation and they specify fixtures for vendors, for electrical engineers and electrical contractors and architects. So it's, it's a field by itself. If you're overwhelmed, you are. I mean, it's a complete, even our electrical students. This is, you can, you can be a certified lighting designer and make a career just doing lighting. But for you guys, at least you need to understand what to ask from the architect, from the engineers. Any comments, any questions about this, guys? So that's um, that's what, what, and if you guys go to, there's every single fixture that God created here. Um, fluorescent and LED high bays, uh, parking lot lights also, if you go to outdoor. Um, indoor, we have um, down light, we have outdoor fixture that you can put in your parking lot but you don't get involved too much into the outdoor probably area and so forth. This is very, very interesting. I site. got them in a studio with, with a residential tab. Okay. Is there a, a good residential site for something or would Lithonia right here be able to- Lithonia give you, I thought there was something residential here. Um, 
Oh, by the way, you guys are in, uh, I thought, uh, gosh, I thought there's something residential here. I don't do a whole lot of residential with it. Um, Okay, so that's, I didn't want to yeah. Take a lot of your time, but I no, to... I know there is some residential. Um, anyway, okay. there is some residential fixtures that you can find too. But this is more geared towards commercial industrial, though. Okay, so that's um, that's the fixtures that we have. Um, okay, any question? Has any comments? Any questions? Any comments about this? Let's go do it by hand. How about that? Let's look at the criteria that your friend uh, and and your instructor, John. John, is this is still the criteria that you guys give to them? Do you have that? Chief, did you change it this year? Uh, 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 let me see. Uh, I have the foot candle, number of fixtures. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're giving them the same. The same, put, the same criteria? The same I have criteria. Uh, LLD.6, GDF.6, and Q.8. Or did we change anything? Yes. Okay. Let me check. So I'm, I'm giving them a more complete definition of it, but the, the uh, lumens I'm giving them as uh, 1800 uh, for each lamp. Uh, okay. The LLD uh, depreciation is 0.6. Okay. The dirt depreciation is 0.6. Okay. Uh, so uh, room. Function uh, utilization point eight. is point seven. I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to do this example, and then we'll yeah. clear all. Yeah, you, you use my numbers uh, because yeah. I can't uh, expect that you memorize those. That yeah. So, so let me. Um, we let, have a, he has a better opinion of the space we have there. Um, foot candle. I want. I want this fixture. This uh, formula, guys. We need the number of fixtures. Uh, if you look at the number of fixtures, it's going to equal. A couple of things. Um, so let me see if I can do it by here. I don't have. Uh, do we have a sheet here? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Right in the thing. Okay, let me just get you into this. Um, I don't have a smart board here, so I'm going to go directly into there. Okay, let's go do it by hand, will you? Um, so the first thing, guys, you need to do is N. N is the number of fixtures, and you're going to hand. Um, now you're going to do my hand. You're going to be careful with my handwriting here. N is the number of fixtures, and by the way, everything that I do here will be PDF'd as well as recorded, so I can send you as a PDF file too. So I have N is the number of fixture, guys. And so the number of fixture equal the, I call it the foot candle, foot candle, which you guys call it E, multiplied by the area, E stand for the area, and everything is going to be divided by, by N, um, um, by what did you say? N number of lamps. N for you, or I'm going to call it lamps here. Lamp, uh, number of lamps in the fixture, and then multiply this one by um, number of lamps. Um, and we're going to have um, uh, their depreciation factor. Just follow their depreciation, lumen depreciation factor. I'm going to call it light. I'm using LLD, LLD just to follow what you guys are doing, and times um, times DDD, their depreciation factor. That's how often we clean it, their depreciation factor. Um, LLD is lumen depreciation factor, how how fast they age. Uh, um, um, their depreciation factor, how often we clean that baby. And we're going to multiply this one by the coefficient of utilization, which is how, <clears throat> which is, the efficiency of this fixture within these circumstances, if you put them based on the reflective ceilings of floor and um, and walls. Okay, do we forget anything? So lamps, light loss factor, depreciation factor, foot candle area. Um, okay, so what I'm trying to do, guys, I'm trying to give you an example. Take a room, <clears throat> give you the criteria for the design, and find how many fixtures do I need and how to place them. Does that make sense? Um, so I have lamps. Um, how many lamps? Um, and also LL, the, you, I forgot the LL here, so I'm going to have right at the beginning here to see LL. LL, based on what you guys define it, is uh, lumen, is the lumen. Cool? Any question guys about this? I need, what, what's the, what am I doing? I'm trying to find how many fixtures do I need in a certain area, and I'll place them evenly in that area. Show you how to place them evenly. Cool? What's LLD stand for? LL? LLD. LLD is light loss, uh, depreciation, uh, uh, lumen depreciation factor, how fast that fixture age. If you guys, if you put a lamp like this today, you think the same lumen, the same light is going to come out of it today 
the same as five years from now, you will be surprised. There's a curve that goes down based on the aging of the, as the lamp age, it will give less light. So based on that criteria, they give it a factor called light, uh, lumen depreciation factor, how fast it, it depreciates. And uh, um, LL, LLD is a lumen depreciation uh, factor and DDD, their depreciation factor. How often do you clean these pictures? Because if they're dirty, they're not gonna get you the right lumens. Okay, so based on this criteria, guys, if you do me a favor, I'm gonna go use um, red here and I'm gonna give you the following areas. Um, I'm gonna assume I have a 40 by 40 area, right? You guys have issue with that? I have a 40 by 40 area, right? The assumption. I'm gonna have a foot candle, a place like this. I need to maintain a foot candle of 70 foot candle. 70 foot candle is good for schools. How do I know? IES, there's recommendation from IES, International Illumination of Society of North America. There's also IES and NEA, North America. They, they have recommendation for every space that God created. <clears throat> so the foot candle here, that one have, <clears throat> let's just say 70, cool? For the sake of the time here. And I want to use, guys, LL. LL typically lumens coming out of the picture. I want to use 300, 3,000 lumens. That's typical for a lamp, like um, uh, like the one above your head here. And um, lamps, how many lamps we want to use? Typically, you start with three lamps. If you, you, Your option is one lamp, two lamps, three lamps, or four lamps. Technically, you can go higher than that. I'm going to start, I'm going to design it with three lampers. Three lampers, the more lamps, guys, the cheaper the equipment is because you have less, less lights. Three lamps. Uh, I'm going to use, guys, um, the depreciation, light uh, loss depreciation factor. I'm going to use what you guys have, 0.6 here. And I'm going to use the dirt depreciation factor um, of uh, dirty place, which is 0.6, very dirty place. That's a, that's a dirty place. A clean place would be a, a 1. And coefficient of realization for this particular fixture is given, I'm going to use your example, is 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Now I forgot to bring my calculator, so I need somebody to do the math for me and give me how many fixtures do I need. Can you guys see what the issue is? I have 70 foot candle, the area is 40 by 40, and I have 300 lumens, three lamps each, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and I need to find how many 2 by 4, like this, right above your head, I need in this 40 by 40 space. I chose a square because it's easier. Can anybody do the calculation? Do anybody have a calculator? I forgot my calculator. Um, well, I actually did not forget my calculator. I forgot that I have a computer calculator here. <laughs> okay, you can you guys can do, go do it with me. Um, so I have 70. See if we can get the same answer. 70 times um, times 40 times 40. And I need to use the brackets for this. Um, divide by, open brackets. I hope I get it, 300, 3,000 times um, 3, times uh, 0 0.6, times uh, 0 0.6, times uh, 0 0.7, right? Did they forget anything? Close the brackets. And this is the answer, should be 44.8, oops. 44.8, did you guys come up with 44.8? No, that's 40.8. Fixtures. fixtures, yeah, 44.8. three lamp fixtures. Yeah, 44.8, um, I clicked on another calculation. Yeah, okay, I can't go back. Anyway, did you guys come up with 44? Can anybody verify it? 49, okay, 49, then 49 it is. Um, I don't know what I clicked. I don't use this often. Um, okay, so 49. So I'm going to use what you guys came up with, 49. So I'm going to come over here and use a 49 for the sake of, sake of 49. Okay, so I have 49 fixtures. <clears throat> for the sake of argument, guys, because of 49 is, here's what I do next. I need to make it a number that I can multiply two numbers by it. Uh, I, I need to factor this number. 49 is, I think, a prime number, isn't it? Is there anything you multiply by any? 49 is a prime number. So I'm screwed, except. Yeah, 7 times 7, actually, right? 7 times 7? Yeah. Have I lost my mind then? 
I'm thinking 47. You're, this is, we hit the, we hit the perfect. So 49, what I usually do, guys, I tell the students, if you're doing it by hand, do factorization. What are the two numbers that you multiply by each other to get you 49? Like we did in the old days. Why did they forget the 7 by 7? I'm thinking 47. Is 47 the prime number? That's what I'm thinking. 47. So yeah. 40, yeah. <laughs> so it, it is. It's 7 by 7, right? Now I got, I got perfect. I got a perfect number. If you couldn't get a number to multiply two numbers by it to get it, go to the next. For example, if I was 47, what are the two numbers I get to get 47? What is that? 47. Two numbers. I think it's a prime number, isn't it? What, what, yeah, well, that's what the definition of prime number. Uh, if you get a 47, here's what I do. Just if you're doing it by hand. Go to the next number, make it 48. Now 48, I can go six by eight, right? Make, go to the next number, add another picture. Who cares, you're doing it by hand. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we don't do it by hand. So everybody can see it. What this will give you, this will give you a number of rows and columns in this room. I need seven rows and seven columns to place my picture. And look at this, because I'm looking at the time here. Everybody knows what I'm doing here. I'm trying to find how many rows, rows and columns in this area so I can place them. I know I have 49, it's not enough. I can put all the 49 in one corner and I have a, a, a very bad distribution of light. So when, you, when you're looking for a number, guys, try to find if the two numbers are, like for example, if I have 48 and my option is for 48, my option is eight times six, or what else my option is? Nine times, uh, what else? Or for 24 times two. Would I use 24 times two versus Nine times six. Long, narrow. Yes, you're going to use two numbers that's close in value, like six times eight, closer than 24 times, times two, right? That's kind of the criteria. The number of rows and the number of columns, try to make them as uh, equal as you can, or as close to each other as you can. Okay, let's go do the calculation because of the sake of the time. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I have my area that you guys have, my complete area here, and excuse my... Uh, my calculation and I'm gonna go how many rows did they have uh, seven one two three four five six seven can you guys see that seven right seven areas and I'm gonna have also here one and I'm gonna go d directly all the way here and all the way here and I'm dividing it into seven spaces basically all the way here, all the way here. Do I have seven spaces? And excuse my drawing here, you guys are architects, I'm an engineer. Do I have seven spaces, seven rows, right? Or columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Here's one, right? Here is two, I is three, four, um five right one two three four five and six seven at the bar so what i did i divided into can you guys see i divided into seven columns seven rows who cares i need to find the exact location of that fixture here the exact location look what i'm going to do now i'm going to go place that fixture <clears throat> um okay let me see if i can um get me okay where am i here okay let's just use that one um let's choose the red okay so i'm going to go here's what i'm going to do here's my fixture i'm going to base my fixture in this case it doesn't matter where you orient your fixture here's my fixture and you guys can imagine that a fixture will be in every space in the middle of every space here right so i'm going to take <clears throat> right if you take a month of line that's going to get 49 fixture right so, so I'm going to take one picture and identify the location of that picture. So take this. Here's the, take from here to here. I need this distance, the X, and I need the Y for the center of this picture. Now you're going to tell me, Chad, we have a grid like this. Yeah. Well, then well, you might have to adjust it to match your grid slightly. But that's your start point. Can you guys see that this is an X from here? And this is also a Y. A Y right in here. Okay, all right, so the, the challenge would be to find this distance from here to here. 
Can you guess uh, what what was the the distance? Forty nine divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, forty nine divided by seven is what? Seven. So this will be seven feet. We right? Everybody knows what we did. This is seven feet, and surprise, surprise, this bottom will be one. Seven feet, right? So every square will be seven by yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're not looking at the fixtures. Thank you, buddy. Okay, why doesn't my eraser wants to come here? Okay, you're right. Um, what we need to do is divide this. Um, how many spaces? I have X, just call them X here. X, X because I don't know them. X and X and X and X and X. Seven X's, right? So you take seven X's. Do your math, seven X's equal how much? 40, right? You're absolutely right, bud. Seven X's. I think I'm just too confused, too in a fast here. And then X equal 40 divided by seven. What's 40 divided by seven, please? Can I get it? What is that? Equal 5.7, thank you. It's 5.7, thank you. 5.7, let's do the Y. What do you guys expect the Y to be? Same, Same thing, 5.7, 5.7, okay. So now we, we find <clears throat> the X and the Y. But this area here, I'm going to call it X1 and Y1. To, to the center of the picture, it will be half of the X, right? Can you guys see that? To the center of the picture, it will be half of the X and half of the Y. Because I'm going to put the center in X and Y. What's half 5.7? And uh, what is ha half of 5.7? 2 point. Come on, where's calculators? 2.8, okay. So this area, believe it or not, this distance here is 2.8, 2.8. And of course, this distance, because it's identical, is going to be 2.8. Gentlemen, we have just found the center of one fixture from the corner. So we came up 2.8 from here and 2.8 from here. And we're going to tell the electrician to place it right in this location. Now, granted, you're going to have a grid. You're going to adjust it to fit in your grid. But that's now the distance between every two fixtures. If I have another fixture from here to here, the distance center to center between these two fixtures. Anybody can tell me what's the distance between this picture? It's twice that, which is 5.7. Thank you, 5.7. Right? And how about the fixture that's going to be in this row here? The distance between these two. Can you guys see that? It's identical, right? 5.7. 5.7. Now, can you find the distance between all the other pictures? Yeah, just 5.7, 5.7, them. We were lucky because it's a square and end up, but if you were not square, the x's will be slightly different than the y's. Who cares? You might end up with an x that's equal 5 and a y that equal 10. You just use the calculation based on x and 10, 10 and uh, 5 and 10. Any question as about that? Now, this is what I call it the poor man or woman job. Nobody does that <laughs> anymore. That's how we used to do it in the house. If you don't have a, 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 com a computer, that's how we do it. Uh, now with the software that we have, guys, it's so easy to place them. You can place them, adjust them. Um, but if you don't have a software, we're going to do it. Now by doing it this way, here's what you achieve. You achieve the average, the way we calculated them, we achieved an average of 70. I think that was uh, our goal of 70 foot candle based on very dirty environment. The environment is extremely dirty. That's why the numbers is 49, is very high. And uh, um, depreciation in the left is extremely bad. And the coefficient of utilization is also bad, meaning the room is dark walls. Based on all this, we came up with 49 fixtures. Now, when we place it, if you place it the way I showed you in this grid, you're almost guaranteed to get the max to minimum as close to one to one as possible. What does that mean? Even distribution of light, lights in a room. Who cares? People look, like it when it's evenly distributed. Well, most of the people. If you ask some of us, they can live in a cave and they don't care. But the majority of the people like to have the light in an area evenly distributed. Does that make sense, guys? Make sense? Any question? Well, now when you got a ceiling grid, you know, that, based on two footing. Absolutely. When you got a ceiling grid, most of the time, guys, what they do is they go 
uh, two feet like you see here, two feet from the wall, you want to maintain it two feet from the wall, and they put your first fixture. And for the most part, they maintain exactly what we're doing here, three. So the, ideally, a fixture like this from the wall, where if it's going this way, we enter this way, from the wall, you want to maintain two feet, and between the fixtures, like you're showing, three feet, that's typical layout of the fixture. Obviously, if you can't hit this one, you can adjust, and you say that two, you can make it one and a half, uh, one if you have to. If you have, uh, and there's a lot of other things, for example, if you have, if we're, we're a school, if we're a school, you would have your picture as school through the um, so-called whiteboard as practical, right? Because if you need you need to throw light on the on the wall. All the calculation that is here is for what they call it the horizontal uh, foot candle calculations. We are only interested on the lights on the floor or the, uh, or the working space, which is the desk level. If you do calculation, the software allows you to throw light and do calculation on the wall. A good example of this school is like us, where you have a whiteboard and you want to throw light on the whiteboard so people can see it. Um, or if you have, uh, um, you know, art, that you want to throw light on the art, and the software allows you to do two types of calculation. They call it horizontal foot candle or vertical foot candle. No problem. Any question as for me? I, uh, I know I flew through everything almost, but that's really what, what the whole uh, lighting calculation is. If you're interested, I can get you the software and you can play with it. It's very easy. Um, and if you if you need help, check my YouTube channel or you can go come swing by my office, Red 18. I should be able to help you if you have it. I know you guys have a lot of things in your mind. Yeah, the last thing I want to show you, Revit. Before I forget, I have five minutes. So we got that one. Now uh, I have my Revit open. Um, so right now you guys are doing Revit, right? So what? What we do, here's my Revit. I just opened one of our students' uh, projects. What we do after we do the calculation with visual, in the past we used to import it to CAD and we're done and we circuit there. Now because Revit came into us, Revit MVP, now we import our work from visual into CAD, make sure it's scaled, right scale. Then we export it, we actually export from visual to CAD. And then we go to Revit and we import the CAD file into Revit as just a 2D view. All I care about is just a 2D view to show me the layout of the picture, that red, that yellow thing. This is just a, a blueprint of the picture, where the picture is going to be located. Then right in Revit, what I do is I go drop my family. And um, I don't know if you, Tim, if you do that one. Lothonia has very important, a, a, a big library of two things the IES files for the software and families. You guys are familiar with the families. Every single fixture, LED or not, has a family in Lufonia. So you can have, so here's my family for example. If I click on this one, you guys are very familiar with that. Here's a family of the fixture that I have. It's a, a plain recess light to a 20 by four. Um, and um, should be two by four here. And here's all the families that I have for all the fixtures that our students are using, different type of fixtures. If you can see, here's one by, two, uh, one by four and so forth. So you can grab any one of them. For us, the big deal, guys, when you drop them, when you drop them in the ceiling, um, if you, when you drop them in the ceiling right here, and I don't want to make a Revit class, it brings a switching. Can you guys see that switching and circuit? This is why we use it. We we'll use it for two deals. Number one, because you guys are going to come, this is a 3D model, Revit. When we drop our fixture, for us, we need to circuit them and switch it. That's how we drop them, circuit and switch it. For you, you're going to take our lights and do 3D modeling of it, and uh, rendering and collision detection between other systems. Um, we're not at this point of doing, in, in, in MAP, we don't have another discipline to do collision detection, but we really use it to throw our picture and make sure it's oriented right. And we circuit it so we can have our schedule on it. Then we give it to the architects, you guys, and the mechanical will give it to you too, and you will do the walkthrough for the customers through this, this big model. And that's when things look like if they're hanging up in the air or 3Ds and so forth. So um, I, I don't know if I can uh, um, view, if I can go 3D view, default 3D view of that one, show you what this will look like. <clears throat> And we have a lot, a whole lot of setup, but I don't want to make it Revit, but, but just to give you, to interest you a little bit. Here's our, our model. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but you can see, can you guys see the picture here? 
This is a fixture hanging down fixture. That's when we can work. And one of my students working in Navis now, we can take this work in Navis, and then we can make walkthrough for the customers through the building. That's, and that's, that's your job. You will do that. So that's the beauty of this software that we're using. It interfaces directly with the top notch software for design right now with Revit MVP and Revit architecture. Any question guys about that? I hope that was helpful. So if you guys have any question again, Chad Kirby, visit my YouTube channel at any time. And this presentation will be in YouTube channel by the end of the day. So go visit there and see it. And thank you for inviting me, John, and all of you guys for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so you're, you're slated for uh, solo performance. Uh,